Hello, Ambassador Gemini, and welcome to Soul Horoscope's Weekly Edition. I'm your host to the universe, Christopher Wateki. And come on down to soulgarden.me, the most loving space on the internet. We have office hours three days a week now, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m., and my new show, Unite the Light, on Fridays at 12 noon Pacific. So come down, join in the chat, join in the discussion, especially if you have some followers or you have a sphere of influence. I want to hear what's going on in your tribe. Now, we are wrapping up the sun in Cancer this month. This is a two-topic uh, month for you. On the one hand, for everyone on Earth, our emotional responses uh, to life, our emotional responses that are programmed in our emotional response system. So this is our EQ, your emotional maturity. And on the other hand, self-esteem, soul capital, the ability to produce, manifest, and draw in abundance. Okay? The big hot topic of every reading, you know, money. Everyone wants to know about money. So you are simultaneously working on emotional responses and soul capital issues. And you are working on these issues together. This is the secret of Gemini, that their self-esteem affects their emotions, and their emotions affects their self-esteem. So as we started, we were looking for emotional context or self-esteem issues that don't serve us, ridding us ourselves of them. Then we moved into shopping for the system that does work for us, finding one that might. Last week, stepping into the emotional shui and trying the feeling self slash confidence of life. This week, we're going to step into the passionate shui, which is really where most of life is drawn as a master. I know you want to intellectualize everything and just think away. Truth is, all the masters feel away because really thoughts support feelings most of the time. Feelings don't always support thoughts if you think about it. No offense, cancer's got one up on all of us. Now that said, as we start, we have inside out. Oh, the twins have traded places. What am I talking about? Mercury is retrograde, retrograded over the weekend. Now, you know as a Gemini, there are two voices in that head of yours, two times two times two times two. And that means that you really have uh, this disposition. Now, usually Gemini uses one voice to talk to people, one voice to themselves, or they have different definitions of the voice. But in a retrograde, the voices get forced out by the universe. And the secondary quiet voice suddenly is being heard hopefully. So in this transition, you are suddenly thinking different about thinking because Mercury is retrograde in Leo. So it's really processing the way you process. And I don't even want to go there, but I understand that's probably what you're doing. <laughs> Sounds too heavy for me. Still, at the same time, you're trying to regain balance and contentment. Venus rules the day on Monday. So as you're thinking inside out, you're trying to restore balance in order to your checking account or to your self-esteem or to your productivity. So you're going to maybe have to innovate your emotional response on Monday. In other words, respond differently to the bill or respond differently to the challenge than you have in the past in order to get forward. Good thing is the moon is in Gemini. So at least your passion and emotions are on your side for this retrograde kind of test of balance. On Tuesday, things get a bit cloudy. That's because Neptune rules the day. So we're logging into our higher self. Listen to the birdie on your shoulder. Listen to those little thoughts, especially now in the retrograde. The moon does shift into Cancer. So now you get very passionate. So your volume of emotion about emotions themselves and your volume of emotion about soul capital, productivity, and money goes up on Tuesday as you kind of space out and log into higher self. So it's really a day of repositioning yourself if you're not in alignment, if your emotions and your self-esteem are not in alignment with your higher spiritual purposes, this is your day out. This is also a day where we come to a final head between Mars and Uranus. Uranus in Aries, Mars in Libra. For you, this is the tug of war between pursuing your heart's desire and on the other side, feeling a responsibility in society. And I think you're going to find a truce. In other words, a place in society that also meets an inner child, a compromise across this fault line. And that helps you, I think, in stepping in the soul capital. So Tuesday's a very busy but quiet day. On Wednesday, it's a loud day. It's light cast day, the most powerful day of the month to manifest our intentions. That's because the two primary states of awareness for manifestation come together, which is I love the sun, meaning I feel the moon. I love it, I feel it. Those are the first two steps. And hopefully you are loving and feeling the new soul capital the new value. That is what you're trying to get passionate about. This is, like cast day, is the day where you'll step into that passionate shui or not and really start to write it. And what you want to do is hold space. Saturn rules the day on like cast day, so we're also committing. So you're committing 
to a value. You're committing to an emotional response system that supports your own inner self-esteem. So you're not going to get mopey anymore. You're going to get happy and say, come on, let's do it. We can do it. So it is a real commitment for you to get going forward. And it's like cast day. Then on Thursday, things get uh, active. Mars rules the day, so things heat up. It is time to take action on Thursday. Put your money where your mouth is. Whatever you like casted yesterday, act on today. So part of manifestation is acting in the moment, in flesh, with energies, moving your body. So apply for the job, apply for the loan, yada, yada, yada. Whatever you can do or you can act on, you should, basically, on a Mars rule day. Also, check out this yod. God has blessed us with another yod pointing to Pluto retrograde. And what it says here is it's uniting a new attitude that's brewing with the moon in Leo over to Jupiter and Venus and Gemini, which is a new ego that's brewing. And if you want your new attitude and your new ego, the universe says you got a Pluto retrograde. All right? You got a Pluto retrograde. You got to rethink where you were on a particular position. Where? All trust. So if you reconsider the fundaments of trust, the fundaments of why you trust or don't trust, Okay, if you reconsider those, you're going to perhaps move forward with these directions that you want to go. And that's what the yacht is basically saying. It is time to get a move on with trust intimacy. And that starts with trusting yourself. And that starts with drawing boundaries or reconsidering where you have drawn boundaries. So maybe you should open up or close up to something, says the yacht. Then on Friday, Friday, we are holding space. We've got really an emotional spot to squat on. What you're squatting on is your value. So if no one is buying your lemonade at that high price, you don't, you don't lower your prices, you squat. Okay, so just squat on those prices, hold space, tell the universe you have high intention of you what you want. Moon is well in the Leo now, so you're very passionate or chatty. It's probably a chatty day, a day of a lot of mental activity. And I want to point out this trine, which is in effect until Wateki notice, which is the trine between Jupiter in your house of ego, trying to expand your overall fortune, your overall defenses, your overall personality, trining into Mars and Libra, which is saying, get your astro moving with personal dreams. So personal dreams and ego, they ping pong each other. So as you move forward with dreams, you feel stronger in your ego. As you feel stronger in your ego, you move, take two steps forward with dreams. You'll continue to ping pong. And that starts really on Friday as you're so chatty and pensive and sharp minded. Then on Saturn day, it's a tested day. It's a day where the universe might passionately test you back, back into the dark feelings, back into the dark side of the moon. You don't want to go there. You want to get passionate shui and just keep going forward, focus forward. What are you focusing on? Well, of course, what you're worth, what you want to manifest, and your emotional responses that support these things, okay? So no matter what comes at you on Saturday, you be there for yourself. Now, the moon is in Virgo, so you do need to be there for yourself. It is a nesting, resting transit. You might feel taxed from the last month. You might feel tired from last month, which just adds to the challenge of holding space for what you deserve. But don't slip back. Keep forward. Check out also this almighty Pluto. I've tied in two Mars or two squares that happen with all of the yacht. And this is just, you know, as you move to that Pluto, as you are willing to reconsider trust, as you're willing to reconsider some of your yeses and nos, you will find not only do you move forward with the yacht and your growth and your personal dreams, but your personal dreams no longer have fear and you're no longer concerned about where you move in society. In other words, the Pluto Yacht is saying, reconsider boundaries, and it all basically works out. And that is Saturday as you're being tested on, will it work out? Then Sunday, it's zero degrees. It is the final degree and also the first degree. It is death and life con contained together. It is Pluto ruled, the only Pluto ruled, Pluto ruled day of the month, and it is the death of soul capital development, and it is the birth of your intellect, your, mo your intellectual state of awareness, which is what you are so good at and what brings you power on earth. So we start a powerful transit on Monday when I come back and then Sunday, things are cloudy as we are in transition and you're basically nesting. Okay, Ambassador, that's all I have for this week's seven day forecast, but I will see you next week with more. Until then, live, love, be.